I've recently seen this guy's videos getting a ton of views. As we look through the videos here, we can see that most of the videos are getting six figure views, if not seven figure views. Let's just take a look at this one, for example. All right, so you get the idea. And so now I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to create these types of videos. All right, so the first thing is to come into ChatGPT right here, and I'm just gonna paste this prompt that says, please list the 35 most influential periods of history and a person that represents that period, starting with the prehistoric nomads. So I'll go ahead and send that and see what we get back here. Okay, so as we can see here, it's basically listed out these different periods of history and given us a short explanation and a prominent figure uh, in these periods of time. So now I'm gonna take my next prompt, which says, create a nine by 16 image that depicts number one, render the scene in a digital realism style with influences from classical landscape painting with intricate details and a slightly idealized ethereal quality. Which by the way, I have a number of prompt variations that you can just copy and paste to follow this process, but get all kinds of really cool different variations and styles of content. You can get those prompts over here in the community on school. I also have more context and details on how to monetize this type of content along with my list of top performing niche accounts. The link for this will be down in the description below, so feel free to check that out if you want. But for this video, I'm just going to send this one and let's see what we get. Okay, so this is what we got. And if you remember, I told it to give us number one. And if we scroll all the way back to number one on the list, we can see that it is in fact, you know, giving us a picture of this prehistoric nomads in 3300 BCE. So now ChatGPT is going to give us images based on these numbers that I give it. So now I'm just gonna say, do the same thing with number two. All right, so here it's given me two variations. And again, if we scroll all the way back up, we can see that it's representing the Neolithic revolution. And so now moving on to the next one, I'm just gonna type in the number three and see if it understands what I mean here. Okay, so here it's saying it's depicting ancient Egypt. And once again, if we scroll all the way back up to number three, we can see that this is in fact ancient Egypt, old kingdom, the time of Emotep. So at this point, I feel pretty confident that it's going to make a pretty good representation based on these numbers that I feed it. And so now I'm just going to continue that process through all of the remaining numbers. So I'll go ahead and fast forward through this part. All right, so I just finished generating the images. And as you can see, I just went through and typed in each number in order. And honestly, a lot of these pictures came out really, really good. This one is representing the Shang Dynasty. Here we have ancient Greece. Here we've got the Viking Age with Leif Erikson, for those of you that are Viking fans. Moving on to medieval Europe. Here we've got the Mongolians with Genghis Khan, you can see right here. This one I thought was really interesting with Leonardo da Vinci. So the AI created Leonardo da Vinci creating the Mona Lisa, which was pretty cool. And so for not having typed in anything besides a single number, I think a lot of these images came out very, very impressive. Here's Christopher Columbus, the American Revolution, which is very clearly George Washington here. Now, if I really wanted to bring these images to the next level, then I could bring them into Magnific right here. And just for fun, I brought in one of the images just to see what it would look like. If you watch this guy's face, this guy's face, his hands, and even you know the city in the background when I run this slider, you can see that it really adds a ton of detail and brings this image to life. So if I was really trying to maximize quality, I would run each image through Magnific. However, for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and skip this step and we'll move on to the next step, which is creating the animation using Krea. So here, I'm just gonna go to the generate video option. So when you get into Krea, you're gonna end up on a screen that looks like this. Now over here on clip duration, you're gonna wanna move this up to 10. So it's basically going to create a 10 second clip. 10 seconds is the maximum. So we're essentially going to be creating a few 10 second clips and then splicing them together. And now at this point, I can just start taking my images from ChatGPT and bringing them into Krea, drop it here. I'm gonna click on it and now it will be added to my little library right here. So I'll just click on it here. As you can see, this kind of adjusts the speed of the animation. And so I like to just drag this all the way to the top, which is one second. And then I'll drag this image to the beginning of the timeline. 
Now, after playing around with this a little bit, I've found that it generally looks the best if you add in about six images per 10 second clip. So here I'm just dragging in a few more of the images into the timeline until we have about six images in here. I'm not going to use every single image from ChatGPT, just the ones that I think look uh, the coolest. And so here is the sixth image in this timeline. And so now I'm just going to rearrange these images so that they're kind of evenly spaced out here. And that looks pretty good right there. So now you can see you have these different options down here, film, render, animation, experimental. For this style, I'm just gonna keep it on film and we're gonna click generate. Okay, so here is the end result. As we can see, we've got this really cool animation going through this timeline right here. Now, sometimes Creo will lose the original image and create a version that has nothing to do with the original image. And in those cases, what you can do is add a text prompt beneath the image. So if I were to come down here and type a text prompt that further specifies what this image is supposed to be, then you can sort of modify or retain certain details that you want. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead with what it gave me. However, there's still one more thing that I need to do. We need to come over here to upscale and click that button. And now we're in the upscaling section. All I'm gonna do here is just make sure that this is on 1.5. I'm gonna change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. And that's what's gonna give us that buttery smooth motion. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So that's pretty much it. Now I'll just hit enhance. All right, so here is the end result after enhancing the clip. So as you can see right now, it's kind of got this glitchy sort of motion. However, after the upscale, we can see that the motion is just buttery smooth and really nice looking. You can totally tell the difference now when I come back over here and then go back and now we can see that really nice smooth motion. All right, so this is the first 10 second clip. I will go ahead and download that. And now I'm just gonna go back to the editor and basically just repeat the process for the following clips. Now, the one thing that you should keep in mind here is that you wanna make sure to start the next clip with the last image of the previous. So this was the last image of the previous clip. I'm gonna grab this and move this to the front. And so this next clip is going to start with this image. And we wanna do this because when I'm splicing all of these clips together, this will basically allow it to have a smooth transition from one clip to the next. All right, so now I'll just go ahead and make the rest of the clips and we'll continue on after that part. Okay, so I just finished creating all my clips. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drag all the clips into Premiere Pro. Obviously you can use whatever editor that you want. Cap cut doesn't really matter. Okay, so I ended up feeling like I only needed three of the clips, so I have those three clips spliced together here. And so now I'm just gonna choose a soundtrack from Artlist. This is obviously a platform where you can get non-copyright music, so I'm just gonna pull the soundtrack into the project right here. All right, so after adding the soundtrack, this is what I ended up with right here. So not bad, obviously I could have made it a lot better if I actually spent some time making it good, but just considering I basically just copied and pasted, I think that came out pretty good. Again, if you wanna see more context and examples and my entire list of different niche accounts that are performing really well and all kinds of cool stuff about how to monetize this type of content, feel free to join the community on school. But that's pretty much it for this one and I will see you in the next video.